now already the third speaker is from Basel. Hello. It's Dr. Sandro Sieber. And he will talk about the zebra fish, probably as an alternative for a lot of animal models we are <laughs> using. Yes. <laughs> So uh, welcome to my presentation in which I will show you how the zebrafish can be used as a preclinical screening model for the optimization of nanomedicine formulations. So nanomedicine development for all the different purposes follows uh, a certain process, so usually follows a certain process which involves uh, formulation design and optimization, including physical chemical characterization, an in vitro assessment regarding cell specificity, cell uptake, or also toxicity. And then some of the formulations are selected and taken further into rodent in vivo trials. So obviously there is a huge gap beti between in vitro assessments and rodent in vivo trials, especially if you would like to look at dynamic processes like pharmacokinetics or biodistribution, which involve the presence of, presence of blood proteins or dynamic uh, fl bl blood flow conditions. Therefore, we introduced the zebrafish as kind of a bridging tool which uh, allows to screen uh, nanomedicine formulations at a very early stage uh, under in vivo conditions and this should help us to select the potentially successful formulations which are then taken further into rodent in vivo studies. So in the following presentation I will show you how this assessment in zebrafish work, so what are the works, working steps and then I will also show what is, what's possible until now. So one of the big advantage of zebrafish embryos is their optical transparency. And there, is all, there are also a lot of transgenic lines available, so a lot of developmental biologists are working with zebrafish, and we usually work with a transgenic zebrafish line expressing macrophages, so expressing a fluorescent protein in their macrophages, and this helps us to see interactions of fluorescently labeled particles with these macrophages. Uh, then we also use a line expressing a fluorescent protein in its vasculature, and this is uh, helpful if you would like to see how your particles behave live in blood circulation. So how does it work? We usually inject uh, fluorescently labeled nanoparticle formulations directly into blood circulation of two-day-old zebrafish embryos. As you can see here, the required injection volume can be calibrated and is between one to five nanoliter. So if you have very expensive samples and you have to screen a lot of different samples, this is a very easy and cheap approach to do a first assessment. So what are we able to do? First, I give you a short overview here and then I will have some additional slides for each of the parameters. So first, an easy one, so macrophage clearance. This is very important if you, for example, designing uh, new materials, uh, for example, PEG alternatives, and you want to have a first assessment, do they perform better than a standard formulation, for example, pegylated liposomes. So we inject them in zebrafish, uh, and just simply by image analysis, uh, do a co-localization analysis of your fluorescent particles and the fluorescent macrophages, and we tell you how your particles behave compared to standard formulation. Then in a very nice uh, uh, effort together with our colleagues in Leiden, so the Alexander Kroos group, we showed that uh, the zebrafish expresses a scavenger receptor in the venous part of the zebrafish vasculature. So this receptor, the scavenger receptor, stabilin 2, is also expressed on liver mammalian, so on mammalian liver sinusoidal endothelial cells. And this receptor is responsible for the scavenging of macromolecules in blood circulation and also nanoparticles. And we showed that if you observe a binding of nanoparticle to this receptor, that this is predictive for hepatic clearance of particles. And then today, so more or less based on, on these two findings, we went a step further and today for the first time, well, I show you a new application of fluorescence correlation spectroscopy, which allows us to perform real time and live pharmacokinetics in living animals without uh, the need of radio labeling or blood sampling. So just to give you a small orientation, so we're doing all the analysis uh, mostly in the tail region of the zebrafish, first because there the animal is very thin, so which is nice for confocal analysis. 
And then there are also a lot of macrophages located in this section. And in addition, the vasculature is very defined. So the top vessel here is an aorta. So it's the dorsal main aorta. And below this whole net, this is all venous vasculature expressing this scavenger receptor. So of course, we uh, introducing a zebrafish for such analysis requires a lot of validation. I will show you some of the examples. So in literature, it is known that uh, an incre so increased peg molecular weight decreases the recognition of particles by macrophages. So therefore, we prepared liposomes containing the same amount of peg, but with increasing peg molecular weight. And as uh, described in literature, the higher the peg molecular weight, the lower the recognition of the particle and the lower the colocalization of nanoparticles, in this case liposomes, with macrophages. And I have to add, so the results I will show you now, they have also been validated in, in, a, in a comparable rodent in vivo model. So we also did this validation again ourselves. So regarding the hepatic clearance of nanoparticles, we uh, validated this uh, selecting a set of liposome which has been described in a very early uh, liposome publication from Peter Collis et al. So in the 90s, early 90s most probably. So they, did, they uh, showed that these uh, liposomes uh, containing these lipids are in general long circulating whereas these liposomes are short circulating. So we injected them in zebrafish and if you look at the zebrafish tail region we see in case of long circulating liposome this diffusive staining pattern which shows us that the particles are still in circulation whereas in case of the short circulating liposomes the particles are bound by the venous part of the vasculature so scavenged by the stabilin 2 receptor. And in order to get a little bit more detailed insight, we, in, in addition to this qualitative assessment, we defined uh, a zebrafish circulation factor, which basically tells you the ratio between the fluorescence in circulation and the fluorescence bound to the vasculature. And this helps you to, more, to compare so your liposomes better with kind of a quantitative value. But uh, doing something like this semi-quantitative is nice but we tried or we try to do the next step and this we just uh, I guess two days ago the patent application was filed for this uh, fluorescence correlation spectroscopy application so we inject we're here in the tail region again this is the aorta the living zebrafish we're injecting the fluorescent labeled liposomes and then we're recording the fluorescence which is diffusing through the confocal volume of, of the microscope and by using FCS instead of confocal, we are also able to check. So this gives you an additional information because uh, so the measurement tells you also about the size of the fluorescence which is, par which is diffusing through the volume. So you always know you're measuring particles and not free fluorescence, for example. Uh, and like this, we were able to, sh to draw kinetic graphs like this. And this offers us the possibility to first start immediate measurements because we don't need blood sampling and we don't need radioactive nuclides. So to validate this or to test this in a first uh, series of experiment, we again prepared different liposome formulations, radio labeled them, did a standard uh, rodent in vivo experiment and compared this to our data in a, uh, gained from an FCS measurement. And what you see, so formulation circulating for a lot or staying for a longer time in circulation uh, they show the same behavior in zebrafish and rodents and what is nice to see here for example in case of dspc uh, due to the fact that you do not require blood sampling and you are able to start the measurement immediate after injection so after first pass of of the formulation circulating through the zebrafish you're able to see kind of initial removement of the first circulating particles right from the beginning away. So in summary, we validated the zebrafish as a model for macrophage clearance uh, regarding pegylated particles. We are applying this now for groups synthesizing peg alternatives. And I didn't show you this data, but uh, this kind of gives you an idea of the resolution. So we are able to observe differences uh, in particle size of 60, 90, and 120 nanometers, which are really small differences. Then we were also able to use the zebrafish as a model for the hepatic clearance of particles. And uh, using FCS it's, FCS, it's possible to perform real-time pharmacokinetic measurements 
in such transparent samples. And with this, I would already like to say thank you to, to all the in involved collaborators. So Dominic Witzigmann, he's now in Peter Cullis' lab in Vancouver. Dr. Thomas Einfeld, which is working in Basel. The whole Alexander Kroos group, where I was introduced to work with zebrafish. And of course, our uh, collaborators doing de developmental biology and generating zebrafish lines for us, Markus Affel, to and the financial support. And thank you for your attentions, and I'm open for uh, questions. Thank you. Well, great talk. Yes. Hi. Thank you for your talk. Um, I was just wondering, in your proposal, you said um, you increased the peg length but kept the peg number the same. And I, well, I know for polymeric nanomicelles, if you increase the peg, because it's not absolutely linear, the bunching of the peg reduces the polymer association number. So you actually end up with less polymers per same size uh, micelle. Do you uh, overcome, well, how do you overcome that? Uh, maybe it's different in liposomes. I'm not so sure. I'm not sure if I got your question completely, but what we do is we add the same, uh, so we, we add the same mole percentage of, of PEG. So the number of PEG chains per liposome should be the same. The only difference is the length on top of the, on top of the liposome. Yeah, uh, very nice talk. Uh, uh, I'm, I was interested about your method of FCS. We're using it for, yeah, it's like fluorescent DLS measurements. But uh, can you really get the size out of these measurements? Because the particles diffuse uh, uh, actively. They are yeah. not really Brownian, uh, so classical Brownian particles. Yeah, true. Uh, but it's possible to, so using a, a pump system, we, calibra we can calibrate uh, the, the diffusion coefficients of the particle. So, so you extract this part of yeah, you, okay. Yeah, and then we just do it it's with calibrated yeah. speeds. We get a calibration curve, and then based on this calibration curve, you can calculate back the actual uh, diffusion uh, speed and, of the and particle. And this is zebrafish or zebrafish embryo? This is zebrafish embryo. Ah, okay. So, so I can give you a short outlook. This is what we filed, so this is also included in the patent. So if you theoretically add a flow chamber and do kind of, I mean, we could do it in rats and mice, right? Just mm -hmm. using fluorescence, because if you do a flow chamber and do kind of dial so yeah. like dialysis. Simulate them. Yeah. Okay, nice, thank you. Yes. Very nice model. Um, short question, have you analyzed the um, protein um, um, <laughs> distribution bit or the, the protein um, composition in zebrafish as compared to other species, as we know that um, we already have species effect between mice and rats sometimes, and that um, it's crucial to look at the, the appropriate species, especially for nanoparticle pharmacokinetics, and also with regard to complement activation, things like that. Yeah. So how far is the zebrafish serum really comparable to all the others? Yeah, this is an absolute critical point. You're absolutely right. So the zebrafish serum composition is, I mean, they started characterizing it, but I would say it's far away from what we would like to know. But what we, so what we do, what we always do, at the moment, you always have to, to get us to, to inject also in parallel standard formulation, which where we know the behavior, re for example, regarding macrophage clearance in, in mammals. So, and then we always, the only thing we're doing, we are comparing to a standard formulation. We tell you adding 10% mm. more cholesterol does have a positive or a negative effect. We're not talking about absolute numbers or, mm. or defined proteins which absorb to the surface. But from your gut feeling, so the composition, will it really differ a lot to other um, rodent species or? So as far as what we've seen now, now uh, just due, due to time reason, I didn't show you the validation in, in mice and rats, but what we've seen now, it's, compar it's absolutely comparable to, to experiments in rodents. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So um, the zebrafish came up. It's very interesting as an alternative for animal work. Uh, for preclinical animal models, but it, do I phrase it correctly if I say the zebrafish is rather to see if you have a change in your formulation, if it does something at the pharmacokinetic level? 
Yes, so I mean, it will never replace Ronin Venus. No, Venus that was Rock. also not a claim, but it yeah. was always at least reduce. Eh? Yet the uh, idea is to reduce or to give. I mean, what are we doing in a lab designing nanomedicines? We are fiddling around with with co with uh, composition, different materials, different size, shape, whatever, and you do cell experiments. Mm -hmm. But instead of doing cell experiments, it's possible to do. Uh, it's pretty easy to do this and pretty fast. Yeah. So colleagues in our lab change the formulation, they give it to me, I do the zebrafish assessment in two hours, depending on imaging time points, immediate feedback, change the composition again, see what kind of effects do we do have. Do you need ethical, animal ethical? No. No? <laughs> also an uh, advantage. You need, you need a general, yeah, yeah, it's always bad to, s to state this, yeah, but uh, uh, you, do, you don't need an approval until five day post fertilization. You need one for the handling of the adult zebrafish, but for performing such experiments on embers, you do not need any permission. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome.